guys, welcome back to Selling with Sandy. Today I'm going to take you through all the different brands that are available to you if you're looking to buy a portable sawmill. Despite the fact that I own a Woodland Mills portable sawmill, that does not mean there are other brands that are out there that might fit your needs better than this one. So I'm going to do my attempt at a comprehensive comparison between all those brands and hopefully when you guys leave here today you get a good idea as to what options are available to you and you might even get some ideas as to options you didn't know was available to you. So hold on, appreciate everyone being here and let's go. All right guys, what you're seeing in front of you is a spreadsheet with a variety of brand names across the top. The brands that I'm gonna talk about represent portable sawmills that will cut approximately 28 inch to 33 and a half inch log diameters. Those brands include Norwood, Woodland Mills, Frontier, Woodmiser, Cooks, Hudson Valley, and Timber King. Now, just below the names are the model names. These model names are not the only models that are produced by these manufacturers. If you go to each of these websites, you will find typically a whole bunch of models that you can choose from. I chose models that, in my opinion, were fairly close in terms of features to one another. And so just take this with a grain of salt. As you're reading through this, understand that there are models lesser and higher under most of these manufacturers that you can go and investigate yourself. Now, just a disclaimer to start here. I compiled all the information here to the best of my knowledge. I, I got the information from each of these manufacturers' websites. As of the date that I obtained it, that was approximately the start of March 2020. As of that date, this information should be fairly accurate. However, do not take this as the uh, as the number one source of information. Please go and talk to the manufacturer individually and get accurate, up to date information before you uh, before you decide on one mill or the other. So. First and foremost, right across the top here, we have the log diameters. Now, you're going to see a variety of log diameters, and you can read them for yourself. The smallest log diameter here is for the Woodmiser, the LT15 Start portable sawmill. That's at 28 inches. The largest is the Timber King 1220 at 33 and a half inches. Let's just have a quick look at what that LT15 Start Sawmill looks like from Woodmiser, so you can see it here. Woodmiser has a very good reputation, and they actually sell a huge variety of portable sawmills and accessories. So this is just one of their models. If we were to compare that to the 33 and a half inch log diameter of the Timber King 1220, you can see why that diameter is so big. Just look at the overall opening size here. Log lengths, so this is going to vary quite a bit as well. The log lengths, this is what the standard length would be if you were not to have any additional track length added. So the Norwood, the Lumbermate MN29, 12 foot 9 inches. You can see the Woodland Mills, 10 foot 5 inches, Frontier 11 foot, etc, etc. Where you start to get to the longer log lengths, so the standard longer log lengths is the Valley Sawmills and the Timber King sawmills. Valley, 17 foot, that's their standard length. Timber King, 17 foot, nine inches. Let's have a look at the Valley, the little blue, special edition portable sawmill, and you guys can see it here. This is a company out of Quebec, Canada, and uh, they, at least in my experience, they seem to have quite a good product from the, uh, from the first glance. So that's the 17 foot sawmill. And if we look back at the Timber King, this one here is 17 foot 9 inches. Now, you can get extensions for most of these other portable sawmills, and that will extend them beyond the numbers you see here, up to and including uh, whatever number uh, you want. So you could add as many extensions as you want to get as long of a bed length as you want. Looking at engine options that are available here, and you'll notice that not every manufacturer offers every variety of engine, and that's that's just fine. Looking at the Valley, you can get a 13 horsepower Honda electric start. You're floating right around $7,000, and these numbers are Canadian dollars, okay? Unless it specifies otherwise, it's in Canadian dollars. Looking over here at the Woodmiser, so a bit more money here. The Woodmiser, the LT15 Start, 
a 14 horsepower Kohler. That's a pull start or a recoil start. You're at just under $8,000 Canadian. In comparison, the Norwood, the Lumbermate MN29, they offer a variety of engine options. And if we look here, the engine options dictate what the price is going to be. At the low end, you can get a 13 and a half Briggs and Stratton electric start or a 14 horsepower Kohler pull start. Those are just around $5,000 Canadian. Bump up even higher. You're getting into a 16 horsepower V twin Briggs and Stratton with an electric start. You're just over $6,000 for that. So in comparison here, just from the onset, what are we looking at between the first few brands? Well, Norwood looks to be the cheapest. Woodmiser looks to be the most expensive as compared with Valley, which is uh, less expensive than the Woodmiser. Getting down even further though, let's compare some of our other manufacturers. We have Woodland Mills here, the HM130 Max. You can get a 14 horsepower Kohler electric start engine with that saw, and it's going to set you back about $4,700 Canadian. That's quite a deal if you look at that price versus the Woodmiser at $7,900 Canadian. That's, uh, that's quite a difference. Are the features of the Woodmiser worth the extra money? That'll be for you guys to decide. Looking at the Frontier Sawmill, the OS31, price point very similar to Woodland Mills. $4,897 or $4,900 Canadian will get you the same engine, the Electric Start Kohler as the Woodland Mills. A little bit less money, $4,500 and change. You can get a 13 and a half Briggs recoil start or pull start. Okay, so that's a basic breakdown of pricing for some of our brands. The last few brands I want to touch on are the Cooks, Hudson, and the Timber King. The Cooks Sawmill, and just so you know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this one right here. This is the MP32 Sawmill. So the Cook Sawmill, if we go back, you're looking at quite a bit more money. Up to you to decide whether the extra money is worth it. But if we break it down here, you can actually get an electric start engine option. If you want a single phase electric engine, by the time you switch over the $8,000 US dollars to Canadian, you're at $10,600 Canadian. 20 horsepower gas engine, Kohler. You're at the same price, 10,600 Canadian, little bit more money. You guys can get a 25 horsepower Kohler fuel injected gas engine. That's just over $11,000 Canadian. So when you're looking at a Cook's sawmill and you're comparing it with some of the other manufacturers like Norwood, Woodland Mills, Frontier, even Valley, you're going to pay a lot more money. Just keep that in mind. Is it worth it to you? Well, you guys can investigate that. The Hudson Sawmill, the Hudson HFE 30. What we're looking at is this one right here. The HFE 30 price point is going to be higher than what you would expect from Norwood, Woodland Mills, and Frontier. And it's actually a little bit higher than Valley as well. $52.95 US. You guys switch that over to Canadian, you're at just over $7,000. That puts it closer to the Wood Miser. Now, I realize you're saying, well, it's still about 900 bucks off. Well, yeah, you're right. But it's certainly closer to the Wood Miser than it would be to the price point of the Woodland Mills, Norwood, Frontier, or, um, yeah, those three, I guess. It's close to Valley. Lastly, what we're going to touch on is the Timber King, the price point for that. That's the 1220. So the Timber King 1220, this unit right here. We're looking at $82.95 US. You guys switch that over to Canadian. You're at just over $11,000 Canadian. That's essentially nearly double the price of a Norwood, Woodland Mills, and Frontier. So just keep that in mind. Some of these brands, Timber King, Cooks in particular, they're getting up there in price. And uh, therefore, if, if the price point is not what you're looking for, you may want to go to those manufacturers and see about alternative models that might be priced better. Some additional information that uh, I jotted down here, and keep in mind some of this information is not available um, on each of the manufacturer's website, but what it was is the maximum depth of cut 
above the blade. Okay, so I want to bring you to the Timber King first and foremost. If you have a look here, here's the blade. We're talking the amount of cut or the amount of material above the blade that you can have. And if we look here, Woodland Mills, the HM130 Max, you can have seven inches of that log above the blade. Wood Miser, 10 and a half inches. Hudson, 11 inches, but look at the Timber King, 16 inches. That's, that's huge, right? Why is it so big with the Timber King? Well, you can see it here, their design. They don't have a lot of a lot of the sawmill above the blade, right? They they make it very thin here. If you compare that to, let's say, the Woodland Mills, the website will come back to us. There we go. If you compare that to the Woodland Mills, notice here how they have a lot of material above the blade. That's going to restrict the uh, amount of log that can be above the blade to the seven inches. Okay, and same thing with the lumber mate. Here's the lumber mate. Uh, if you look right here, here's the blade, and right there is more material of the sawmill, hence why you can't have any more than, what did we say there? Any more, actually, they didn't say, but you definitely can't have uh, too much more than um, probably seven inches. All right, uh, let's look at this part here. So let's assume you're going to buy these portable sawmills and these models listed. What's it going to set you back if you're just buying the sawmill, you're not buying a trailer, you're not adding extensions, uh, base engine, electric start, uh, including an auto lubrication system? Well, the Norwood, the Lumbermate MN29, $51.93. Woodland Mills, $46.99, and this is Canadian. OS31 by Frontier, $44.96. Woodmiser, I couldn't find the information. I couldn't find too much information on the Woodmiser website. Uh, they tend to want you to contact them to get the information, so I encourage you to do that. Cooks, however, you're looking at $10,600. I don't know if that engine's electric start, though. Hudson, you're looking at just under $10,000 Canadian. Okay. Um, one thing to mention with that Hudson, you would have to go up to the Pro Series. You'll notice that's one of their models. You'd have to go up to the Pro Series to move from a pull start to an electric start. Valley, you're looking at $6,700 Canadian. And Timber King, you're looking at just over 11000 Canadian. Now, keep in mind, this increased price here, this Timber King, it offers you a longer bed length as compared with some of these others. That's why you're probably paying more at the onset. You don't have to uh, you don't have to add any extensions to get that long bed length. Let's assume you wanted a trailer. Okay, so I'm right here. Let's assume you want a trailer, no additional extensions, base engine, electric start, auto loop. The Lumbermate MN29 by Norwood. 6686, 12 foot, 9 inch log you're cutting with that. Gives you that trailer. Woodland Mills, 6398. 10 foot, 5 inch log, it'll cut. Frontier, 11 foot log, 6683 Canadian. Woodmiser, once again, I don't know. You got to contact them. Cooks, they offer a really cool package, and I, I kind of like them for doing this. They put a package together. What that includes is a 16 foot sawmill bed, the trailer, log ramps, cant hook, 10 pack of blades, as well as the Kohler electric start engine. And that's for, with exchange, $13,252 Canadian. Now, that's a lot more money than some of these other Norwood Woodland Mills and Frontier sawmills. So keep that into consideration. Yes, you're getting a fairly long log length. That's 16 feet. But the price reflects that. It's quite a bit higher. Hudson couldn't find information about trailers. So we're talking about this one right here. I don't know if they offer trailers or not. You'll have to reach out to them. Uh, just not available on the website. Valley. So the Valley Little Blue Special Edition, $76.95 Canadian. That gets you a 17-foot log, though. That's quite a bit bigger than uh, what you would expect for um, some of the other Norwood Woodland Mills and Frontier sawmills. So trailer cuts a 17-foot log. You're looking at $76.95 Canadian. And finally, Timber King, 
If you want a trailer in addition to the 1220 sawmill, price jumps up. You're at 14208 Canadian. That is nearly double the price of the Valley. So once again, you guys will have to decide, is the quality of the Timber King, is the features worth the extra dough as compared with something like this, which is made by Valley? Okay. Now, I couldn't get additional information for some of these manufacturers for this next row here. Therefore, I'm just going to provide you with what I found. Let's assume you wanted to get a trailer, you wanted one additional bed extension, you wanted the base engine, electric start, and auto lubrication. Well, Norwood, the LM, excuse me, the MN 297270 Canadian, almost a 17 foot log. Very similarly with the Woodland Mills HM 130 Max, you're looking at about $7,200 Canadian. So these two, priced very similarly, give you a trailer as well as a very similar log length at just under 17 feet. Jump up the log length a little bit more to 18 feet with the Frontier OS 31 and a trailer. You're at $7,500 and change Canadian. Why is there no extensions for some of these? Well, some of the manufacturers say reach out to them and discuss custom lengths. Some of the manufacturers just have a standard length, meaning they sell one length only, and if you want longer, too bad. Others, I just couldn't get the information. And so if you want information on bed lengths other than what the standard length is, reach out to these companies here, Cooks, Hudson Valley, Timber King, and Woodmiser, and I'm sure you'll get the answers you need. Just to summarize here, the overall bed lengths. Okay, the overall bed lengths. Some information I found there. Uh, Norwood, the MN29, you're at 16 feet. HM130 Max, 13 feet, 6 inches. OS31, 14 feet. The Hudson, HFE30, 14 feet. The Valley, 19 foot, 5 inches. And the Timber King, 20 feet. Okay. Uh, some width. So the width of the actual bed, this was kind of hard to find this information, but here's what I gathered. Woodland Mills, 37 inches, 37 inches for the Frontier. I don't know about the other manufacturers. Blade length. Typically as the sawmill gets bigger, the band wheels are further apart, hence the band or the uh, blade length is longer. If we're looking at the Norwood, 144 inches, Woodland Mills, 158 inches. Frontier, 144. Woodmiser, 158. Even bigger yet. The Hudson at 167. Valley, 157 and a half. And Timber King and Cooks, I have no idea. Band wheels. So the actual cast iron band wheels, the ones that are uh, holding the momentum as the blade turns, they typically were right around 19 inches for all the manufacturers. I couldn't find the information for Hudson Valley or Timber King. You guys will have to investigate that. Same thing with the drives. Most of these sawmills used a centrifugal clutch. That's what transferred the power from the engine to the actual pulley and ultimately the band wheels. I'm not sure about some of these manufacturers like Woodland, uh, excuse me, Woodmiser, Cooks, Valley, Hudson, and Timber King. Uh, actually, Hudson uses a centrifugal clutch. But the other ones, you guys can ask them yourself. I'm pretty certain they would probably use a similar system, but to be sure, ask. Bed length extensions. I'm not going to go through all of this because it's here and available for you. Pause the video, check it out, read through it. But bed length extensions are only available on some of these manufacturers. Others, they have a standard length. And if you want something different than a standard length, some of them will customize the bed length. You just have to reach out to them. <clears throat> Same thing here. So some of these manufacturers offer extra accessories. Some offer more accessories than others. As an example, Woodmiser offers a huge amount of accessories, whereas other companies do not. Some of those 
accessories I listed here, like log loaders, uh, rollers, um, cant hooks, things of that nature, winches. I listed all that here. You guys can uh, can check that out. In my experience, you need something to get the log onto the log bed. If you don't have a piece of equipment like a tractor or forklift or something like that, you will definitely need something like a, a series of ramps to roll your log up onto the bed with. And that's why I listed it here as a common accessory. Replacement blade costs, very similar across most of the manufacturers. With the exception, the Hudson, they up their price to $337, but that gets you a box of 15 blades. Keep this in mind here, $337 US, $203 US. Those are in US dollars, whereas these values here are in Canadian dollars. Okay, so if you convert that, I don't know what that's going to be, but it's certainly more than what you see there in Canadian dollars. Sawmill warranty is very important because we want our products to last. We want our companies to stand behind them. <clears throat> Norwood, Woodland Mills, Frontier, and Woodmiser, they are very similar with the exception Frontier is one year less for the sawmill warranty. Woodland Mills, one year more for the engine warranty. These are still very similar. They're similar in comparison with Timber King. Timber King, they the 1220 model, they stand behind it with a five-year sawmill warranty. That's pretty good in my books. Shipping weight, you guys can see that here. Timber King is quite a bit heavier than some of the other brands. Now, keep in mind, it's probably because the standard length of these sawmills, the Timber King, is longer, hence the extra 400 pounds. Lubrication tank, so the tank that's going to hold your water or whatever else you're lubricating your blade with. Some of them didn't list the size of those tanks, others did. 13 liters for the Woodland Mills, 12 for the Frontier, 18 liters for the Woodmiser, 18 for Hudson and Valley. I didn't do the conversion, but it's 7 gallons, so that'll put us over the 18 liter mark. Returns, very standard all across the board. Most of these manufacturers, if listed, said return your sawmill if you're unhappy in 30 days. Okay, so just to recap here, let's have another look at our portable sawmills we just compared. Here's one of the sawmills here. This is the Lumbermate, the LM29 by Norwood. Really big company. The company stands behind their product based on their website. This website has a lot of information on it. In fact, they're, uh, they're actually on sale as I speak, but they have a lot of information on their website. What they really want you to do, however, is to reach out to them to get some of the fine details on pricing. The Woodland Mills, the HM130 Max, this portable sawmill just went through an overhaul. They made some really good changes to this sawmill that I think makes it even better than the HM130 model that I own. And I encourage you guys to check out my video where I go over all of those HM130 Max features. Looking at the Frontier, the Frontier is essentially a, I would say it's, a, it's comparable in terms of its design to Woodland Mills. However, it has some features that I think may or may not be as good. That's going to be for you to decide as the Woodland Mills. Frontier is sort of a uh, a subset of, of Norwood sawmills. So these are connected at the hip almost, Norwood and Frontier. Their website gave you some information, but as I said before, you got to contact them to get additional details. Woodmiser, this is a well known company. The Woodmiser brand has a lot of, I guess, a lot of, uh, a lot of people behind it, a lot of people who have used these sawmills all across the world for years and they have built that reputation for quality. This is more expensive typically than the Norwood, the Woodland Mills, and the Frontier. You guys will have to investigate uh, whether you think that additional cost is worth what you're getting. In my opinion, it looks like a great portable sawmill, but I have not had a chance to use one. So do your due diligence, go and have a look at it. Once again, Woodmiser seems to be one of those companies that wants you to reach out to them, contacting a dealer to get additional information, including pricing. 
There's not a lot of information up front, which is the case with Woodland Mills. Woodland Mills, in contrast, has most of their information up front on their website. Pricing seems clear. Details are clear. That's in contrast to Woodmiser. The Cook's Portable Sawmill, this thing seems quite well built. It has a great, uh, a great number of options available for it. And uh, although the price is more, you guys can check out whether you think Cook's, with its added price, is worth the money. Hudson, so this was a fairly new uh, brand for me. I hadn't heard of them. And some of the reason I probably hadn't heard of them is this company is not that, um, I would say, not that well-known here in Canada, at least in my experience here in Ontario. And uh, therefore, I didn't actually know about them until one of you guys told me about them. But on closer inspection, their, their model of portable sawmill seems very simplistic, well-built, and it seems like it'll do the job. So this looks to be a good product. You guys who have more experience with them, I'd like to hear from you. But uh, check out their website. Once again, they look to have you contact them to get additional details as opposed to having it uh, on their website. This brand here, another one of you viewers out there mentioned this brand to me. Uh, this brand, as I mentioned, made here in Quebec, Canada. It appears to be a very well-built portable sawmill. And I think if I would have, uh, if I would have uh, had a chance to maybe go and try this out, I would probably feel even stronger about this, this uh, sawmill because my first glimpse of it is that it looks to be very well built and very well thought out. So check this one out, that's the Valley Sawmill. And the last one here, this one I have seen around on various videos and some of you guys have even talked about it. It's the Timber King. This thing seems built heavy duty. It seems like the engine options will meet a variety of variety of needs for the, for the users. The only trouble for me here in Canada I'm not familiar with Timber King dealers in my area, so it would be a bit more difficult for me to get out and try one of these. But if you live close to Timber King dealers, uh, I would encourage you to check them out because they definitely look like they have, uh, they have some good things going, especially with the, uh, the robust bed and the overall opening size of their, uh, I guess we'll call it the throat of their portable sawmill here. So definitely a real cool thing there that they have going, okay? Let's go back to the sawmill comparison. What I did here at the bottom was I listed a few things that I liked and some things that I didn't like. So right across the top here, things that I liked about the Norwood sawmill. You can add a lot of features to it, tow boards, lap siding functions or attachments log turners, etc. I also like the fact that the bed rails have wheels on it and they appear to be on the top as well as the two sides. So the sawmill looks like it's going to move smoothly on those bed rails. Things I don't like about the Norwood, the LM29, the Norwood website, in my opinion, was a bit more difficult to navigate to figure out pricing. It was difficult for me because I'm trying to compare portable sawmills in order to figure out what I want to buy, but I can't get the price readily. I don't like having to constantly go back and forth with the dealer to get the price, so I would prefer that to be front and center on the website. Things I like about the Woodland Mills sawmill, the adjustable height controls, the customer service is excellent, and that's not just me saying it. Uh, I've heard that from a variety of users as well. Cables are easily accessible for lubrication, and I like the fact that the doors on this portable sawmill, they swing open. So this would swing like a door open towards you, so you can have this portable sawmill at any height and access the blades. Other brands, like the Frontier, this door here on the front actually folds upwards. I'm not a big fan of that because that means you probably would have to have the portable sawmill up high or if it's down low, you would have to crouch to get at the blades. Let's talk about the Woodmiser sawmill. Strong reputation. I like that. 
used by many professionals. So Woodmiser has a great reputation for professional use. I like that. Things I don't like, I don't like having to request a quote to get accurate pricing. That just sort of bogs down my motivation. Uh, maybe you could say I'm lazy, but it, it makes it more difficult for me to figure out what I'm going to uh, what I'm going to purchase if I have to dig for pricing. Cooks, okay, the Cook sawmill. So you know what we're talking about. We're back here, the MP32 sawmill, the Cook sawmill. What I like: the solid beams and welded joints for structural stability. There's nothing that's bolted together here. It's a solid steel bed frame. The 3 16 inch wall steel. There's no thin steel anywhere. So when we're talking here, we're talking about these long rails here. It's all welded. Nothing's bolted together. 3 16 inch steel. So definitely sounds like some heavy duty stuff. I also like the package options they put together. The package option I mentioned a minute ago, that's where you can get like the trailer, the sawmill, you can get the log, um, the log ramps, the can hooks, the blades, etc. I like how they package that all together for one price. Some other things I'm going to touch on here include things I like about the valley sawmill, and that's this guy here, the blue one. So the valley sawmill. I like the automatic saw head positioning. It uses a winch and a battery. There is no hand cranking here. So if we zoom in here, let's see where we can see it. Oh, right there. There's the battery right where my mouse is. Let's see if we can zoom out here maybe. Yeah, there we go. So there's the battery right where my mouse is. You can see the winch and that winch is connected to a cable system. The cable system goes down and will pull the saw head up and down. So that is a power saw head. That is in direct contrast with many of the other manufacturers where you have some sort of crank system. You can see it right there. The Woodland Mills has a crank system as well, as does the Frontier. Okay, in fact, I think I think most of the other manufacturers do. I uh, can't remember about the Woodmiser here. Can't remember about this one. You guys would have to check. This might actually be a powered sawmill head you'd have to check that this one here though this one is definitely um now that i say that yeah manual height adjustment that's right this one here you'd have to do some cranking okay and just trying to get you guys a better picture of that it's funny when i want to see it i can't see it uh, i can't quite see it but this one, as I was mentioning, the Valley Sawmill, having that powered lift is definitely a great option, especially if you're cutting all day, or maybe you're cutting for a job, or even if you're, maybe you struggle, you have some sort of physical uh, disability, this would be a great thing for you, okay? Uh, what else we got here? Some other things I liked about the Valley Sawmill, the auto blade loop system. Large seven gallon removable, see that? Removable lubrication tank. I like that it's easily removable. You can take it with you, fill it up, especially if you don't have water near you. Take it back to your sawmill next time you're out cutting. One integrated tow board allows you to compensate for the taper of a log without any effort, right? So if the log tends to sag a bit, you can, uh, you can make up for that, okay? One thing that's also on the Valley website that you guys can check out, they put together they put together a spreadsheet. I don't know if I can find it today. I can't find it off the top of my head, but they actually put together a spreadsheet that compares all the different types of portable sawmills that are their competition in terms of their features, cost, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You guys can check that out on the Valley Sawmill website. Another thing that's interesting, if you live nearby, you can get that uh, Valley Sawmill fully assembled. So you pick it up and uh, tow it away, which is great. Hey, okay, things I like about the Timber King, the massive clearance above the blade in that throat spot I mentioned. I also like the fact that it has box beam construction. The bed rails here, are box beam steel. 
that looks very robust and very strong. Okay. I also, as I mentioned, like the space above the blade. Things I didn't like about the Timber King. Crank handles for log dogs are way down low. Okay, see right here? Uh, just looking if we can get in any closer here. Right here. See this handle right here to move the log dog away and closer to the log? See how low it is? That's going to be a bit problematic, especially for, uh, for people like me where it, it tends to get blowing snow, blowing in close to my sawmill. What ends up happening is this would be dragging in the snow. Otherwise, I'd have to get this sawmill lifted up quite a bit. So for me, that is a bit of a uh, bit of a deterrent. But for you, if you don't have snow and maybe you are putting this onto a trailer of sorts, that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, some other things about the Timber King. I couldn't find many of the prices for accessories, log ramps, winches, extensions, if available. I, I couldn't figure out that information on their website without having to contact them for additional details. Not a big fan of that. Is it the end of the world? No. So that uh, that's just a heads up. Let's talk about the Frontier here. And just so you know what we're dealing with, here's the Frontier again. Okay. So some of the things I liked about the Frontier, the design appears to be similar to the Woodland Mills HM130 Max. Whether the quality is the same or not, I'm not sure. I have not used. The Frontier Sawmills, but I can tell you the Woodland Mills is well built. Things I don't like about the Frontier, the band wheel cover, as I mentioned, folds upwards. I also don't like the screw type log dogs. And it may be difficult for me to find it here. Let's see if we can zoom in. It's funny, it's actually on the other side, but you'll just have to take my words for that. But the uh, the log dogs, so the things that hold the log. Uh, steady you actually have a screw type mechanism as opposed to Maybe the woodland mills will show it as opposed to the woodland mills the woodland mills right here Their log dog you just push down on this lever and it puts pressure on the log screw type It's like a screw on a clamp My concern with that is if it gets wet and it rusts it might become stiff. It could also freeze especially in a cold climate like I am here in Canada other things and last thing that I did not like about the Frontier, there didn't mention fenders. There wasn't any mention of fenders included with the trailer. Now, does it include fenders if you buy a trailer for this Frontier? That would be something to ask them. I'm sure if push came to shove, you could find some uh, at a local store, but I would just like to see it mentioned as uh, included in the price of a trailer. Okay, if it is, great, uh, but if it isn't, Make sure that's known. I think that's it, guys. I think that's it for my comparison. If you guys have any questions at all about any of the sawmills that we dealt with today, please put it down below. I would also like to hear from you if you have any experience with any of these portable sawmills, especially some of them that I'm less familiar with. As I mentioned before, I have been a proud and happy owner of the Woodland Mills HM130. It has cut a lot of wood for me, and it's definitely, hopefully, going to last for a number of years to come. If you guys have questions about that sawmill, please check out my other videos or ask down below in the comments section. As always, guys, I appreciate all you watching, and make sure you come on back next time. Hopefully, the snow will go away, and we'll be back out there sawing lumber before long. See you guys then.